An inside look at the Spooky Nook Sports Complex during the 20th Lancaster Archery Classic. During our qualification days, there is a full area where vendors come and shooters can really peruse until their heart's content. You can really talk to people who work at some of these companies and go to Lancaster Archery Trailer and it's great. Live views from Spooky Nook Sports Center here in Olympic Center where we have our final matches of the day. And welcome everyone to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, standing along, sitting alongside Matt Zernzak. Now, Matt, here we go. Let's okay. go. We're, no seven, we're seven matches to decide who's going to be 2024 Bear Bow champ. Bear Bow. No sights, no stabilizers, no release aids. Anything could happen. Here we are. Now, I don't understand. Tell me, why is Bear Bow so popular? Why is it so many views on YouTube? And why are there so many shooters coming into the fold in the last couple of years? The crowd's rowdy. The barrier to entry with equipment is low, and anything can happen. No matter where you are in your match, if you're 10 points away in these finals, you're still in it. And I'm going to make a prediction that Matt's going to make a prediction about the future of Barebow later <laughs> on in this <laughs> yes, broadcast. <laughs> and it's going to be something spectacular. So let's take a look. This is our top eight qualifiers. Tell us all about this. Top 64 men made it to the eliminations after our qualifications. We whittled that down to eight ranks and ties are broken by 11s. This is a bottom-up format, which means number seven plays number eight, winner plays six, winner plays five, and so on until we get to the number one top-seeded Barebow Archer. Yep, and it's cumulative scoring, and we're going to tell you more about that. But right now, it's time to get our archers to the field of play. Here's P.J. Riley. All right, everybody. All right. Here we go. The big finale. And we're going to kick it off with our number eight qualifier from Kingsley, Pennsylvania, the Pied Piper of Barebow Archers, JD3, John Demmer. Look at that mean mugging up there. All right, and our number seven qualifier, Wallace David Woodleaf from Cypress, Texas. Two-time collegiate All-American, 2023 Gator Cup champ. Here's a good look at David. Woody Lee. Bow for four years. Two That's times it. collegiate All-American versus, versus the goat here <laughs> with uh, Blue Steel. Or <laughs> a nice nice little is pose that, there. Is that Blue Steel? I think so. I, yeah, I mean, it might be. It makes me feel good. And I love Demmer's highlight here, getting people to have fun That's in it. archery, and, and that is definitely the way it well. goes. Craig, this is so interesting. We're not used to seeing John this early in the lineup. He came in seated eighth. His elimination rounds were, he was a little loose. He needs to tighten it up coming into eliminations. So we have a potential to see him make a run here, which will be really exciting. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to catch up to catch up with him right before the finals. Oh, come on. David calls 12. <laughs> right out of the box. Here right we out go. of the box. We'll leave I, trying to get some fans. I, I, I don't believe uh, I don't believe Wallace will be uh, aiming for the 12 on this arrow. That would be interesting if he did, uh, but this will be interesting. So here we go. Just like we talked about in the women's barebow division, your goal here is to check the lighting. We are using stripped down Olympic recurves, no sights, no stabilizers, and we are aiming off the tip of our arrow. So what we're doing here is you'll see John, you'll see Wallace. They make what we call a crawl down the string. Our tabs have little marks on them. And if you are a recurve archer or a compound archer, picture it as our tab is our sight plate or our sight tape, just like you would have on a single pin slider. And we vary the distance. We come down the string to change the launch trajectory of the arrow. So these guys are standing at 20 yards. 11. They, oh, baby. Wow. They crawl down the string down to a mark, and that mark represents all I have to do is stick the tip of the arrow on the gold, and it's going to go there based off of that trajectory. Denver seems to be coming out hot. Yes, 10-10, tied last arrow of the first end. 
kind of tell from the rhythm, even from the three shots we've seen from Woodleaf, that that wasn't really his rhythm. That's right. Shot. John, a little long hold hey. there. Okay, we have a tie after the first end. I have a lot of comments to make on these guys' <laughs> approach. Next end. Let's, yeah, let's go to PJ. Are you handing off? He's going to shoot your arrows from now on. Oh, yeah. So He's a recurve. He's not that good. <laughs> Two-time collegiate All-American, David. Are you still in school or are you finished? Still in school. Have one more semester left. All right, so you're going for three-time collegiate All-American. Yeah, I have to finish off my master's in a good way. Uh, have you been to the Classic before? Yes, I was here last year. Last year was your first time. Okay. At Texas A&M, well, Connor Caulfield goes there, so you're familiar with Barebow, but were you aware of the classic Barebow show before you came here? Sort of, but not, not until I really saw it last year. Right. Once you got here, what did you think of that? A lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people. Well, all right, well, welcome to the classic finals stage, uh, David. After our first end, we have a tie match, 28-28. Okay, here we go, 28 to 28, second end. I'm requesting a shot of David Wallace as he is looking at the grip of his bow. He does something interesting. So with bare bow, we don't have a clicker like on an Olympic recurve, or we don't have a release aid where you kind of rotate if it's like a back tension release. So what triggers the shot? So John Demmer, he's running a very classic bare bow shot where he draws back, he aims, and he is basically focusing on that gold, and then he transitions his conscious mind to his biomechanics and runs the shot based off of a feeling on his back tension. What David's doing, if we can look at the grip of his bow, he's using what's called a triggered shot. So I mentioned this earlier in the women's broadcast. What you can do is have some type of tactile touch or feel that gives you the look of a clicker. Now watch his ring finger, or his middle finger, on his bow riser. This is what's called a grip sear. He's going to release as soon as his fingernail pops off the riser. Watch, he's pushing. Oh, yeah. And you see that finger? Yeah. So what he's basically doing is drawing back, getting to anchor, aiming, and then he starts moving into his expansion and execution as he increases the pressure on that fingernail. And when the fingernail pops, it acts like a clicker on an Olympic recurve to trigger his shot. And that's just a way to manage the target panic. It gives you an end goal for the shot uh, rather than allowing the aim to take over your shot. Right, or focused on, I need to shoot at 10, right. or I need to Absolutely. shoot at 11. Yep. Now Absolutely. you're going, when's the finger going to pop? Yep, and John is what we call a very good non-triggered shooter. So he's basically aiming, has a very soft ah. aim, but his conscious mind is running of the feeling of the shot. Mm -hmm. And we have a one-point game after the second end here. Sparebo, Demmer. I heard through the crowd, uh, the question asked most often in there was, when are you taking me fishing again? Ooh, you know, it was an experience. It, I wouldn't say it was a pleasurable experience. I think it was a once in a lifetime uh, thing, so. It may never happen again is what you're saying. Yeah, and, and more importantly, the biggest question is, how did you get this job? <laughs> this is all I'm good at. I can't shoot that so I can hold this. It sounds good. Hey, so John, no, but in seriousness, so you're like the figurehead of this sport. Everybody knows John Demmer. You've been doing this a long time. What keeps you coming back year after year? The people, of course. Simple enough. There you have it. Tied up. Oh, baby. Still tied. So we got two ends apiece. We got two to go. 28-28 the first end, now 55-55 after the official score is in. Here we go. They mentioned fishing. John is better fly at fly fishing than he is at barebow archery, if you can believe it. It's hard to believe. He is an incredible fl fly fisherman, and actually, I'm going fishing with him in May. Are you? Oh, yeah, I'm going on a fishing trip with, with all the boys. So he I've never fly fished a day in my life. <laughs> yeah, you better be decent. He's trash talking PJ like that. Here's David here. You can see that grip seer going, and you're going to see it pop. There yep. he goes. Pop and shoot. Very cool, very cool process. All right, so this is the eighth and seventh place shooters, and the winner of this match will now advance yep. to go oh, shoot against the sixth place is Demmer. So you can see Demmer's weighted up his bow. He's running a Hoyt riser with the two of the new bare bow Hoyt weights, and you can see um, David Woodleaf is also running a Hoyt riser. This, uh, that looks like the old Exceed riser, and he's running also a specific designed bare bow weight of, it's kind of a plate style that bolts to the bottom of the riser. 
Oh, that's a great letdown. He's got plenty of time. I'm plenty looking time. for the shot clock. Yeah, no, he's got 18. 18, yeah. 18 no, seconds no remaining. No issues. Yeah, no. A, and you can hear everyone in the Barebow crowd applaud that letdown because it's so hard to do in Barebow. And that was a beautiful shot for him to be able to let that down. He knew something was wrong in his process, let it down, recollected himself, and just capitalized on a beautiful 11. Let's see what David Woodleaf can do here. Eight. Just keeps going left on this end. All right, so Demmer, can he put up a 33? Eight. All right. It's going to be good to come into that fourth end with a nice little buffer there. I am surprised that the little 12 showmanship thing didn't happen that end, but let's get back to PJ. Collegiate archery is barebow. Is that a big division? It's grown over the past couple of years and got about 50 guys now. 50 guys total or on the Texas A&M shooting it? Total. I'm trying to get 50 at A&M. Trying to get 50 there. All right. Well, in that world, in the collegiate world, do you know guys like John Demmer and Matt Yakka? I see them at USAT occasionally when they decide to show up. <laughs> when they decide to show up. All right. That sounds like a challenge, guys. Oh, wow, this great. is just the world of calling people out, <laughs> that's right? It, that's right. And they, they mentioned Matty Yaka. That's the coach that's in uh, Demers box. So mm -hmm. um, Hoyt Pro Staff shooter but in the barebow division, one of the top barebow archers in the field, got knocked out during eliminations. And him and Demer always seem to find themselves in outdoor, like outdoor nationals at the 50-meter game, competing with each other head-to-head um, -head in the finals gold medal match. Uh, Matty's just a really good person to have He's in your coach's box. Good dude. Very interesting draw and aim, though, yeah. from Woodleaf. Where Absolutely. He, kinda, he goes left, he goes kind of high, and then That's he settles it. down into a I, shot. I think what he's doing is he's really getting into his back with that rotational draw. He's really coming around the corner, getting his scapula fully engaged, where Demmer has a little bit more of a linear shot process. So these guys are running three-spot targets. Um, you know, there's a lot of archers this year that ran three-spot targets. Typically, you see a single-spot target in barebow, just because if you do throw a flyer out into the five ring or below, you're still going to get points. If these guys miss this. The best they can do is six points. Uh, but I think this is where the game is going. I think these guys are just keeping these groups. They're continuing to progress the sport. Here we go. All right, we got, we got David called. with a 12 call here. It's not going to be enough as long as Demmer puts a good solid yeah, arrow This is in the there. final end, so he's got to really go for the 12. Yeah, he does. Maximizes maximize his points. Let's see what he does here. Nine. Oh, just high. Just high. Good shot, though. Here we go. Six will do it. Oh, Nine. with authority. That was beautiful. Great first match by Demmer. Let's see if he can make a run here. He's got a big archer coming out here next. Yep. And as we look at the target, we can see off camera that uh, Demmer's really encouraging David Woodleaf to keep it going. He's a really good shooter. So officials down at the target are going to confirm what we see on the screen. And nothing's official in archery until the officials say something. <laughs> That's right. So it'll be interesting to see what our next competitor does. If they're going to bump John, I'm sure he will, over to the right platform. But a great opening round. 112 is a very good score in Barebow for a final. Yeah, it's official. 112. There we go. To 108. Woodley finishes eighth place and will take home 400 bucks for his effort. Take that back to A&M. So Demmer advances. Which this crowd loves to see. Absolutely. Great match. From Stockholm, Sweden, Leo Pedersen. Four-time European champ, 13 world records. Here we go, Leo, no stranger to the stage. He showed up, I think he was in the 2022 Lancaster Classic, made the final stage. Really popularized with these big, what he called turbine fletchings, where he had six of those yellow fletchings. Oh, yeah. That's changed this year. He doesn't have that. But 13 world records. This kid can shoot. 
He yeah. travels with Lena and Eric Johnson, so he just is surrounded by incredible legends in the bareboat community. Some fun facts about Leo that I love about him. You can tell he's a competitor. He has a list he's been keeping in his quiver. It's a hit list. He wants to go to a tournament, and if he scores better than these legends of the sport, he crosses them off the hit list. And so far, he has crossed everyone off the list except for Michael Fisher, wow. who is our uh, 2019, I believe, uh, Lancaster champion from Australia, who didn't make the trek this year. 11. And John just shoots an 11. We got Leo calling the 12. What a great arrow. Demmer just showing Leo that the bumping over to the right stage didn't do anything for him. A little bit of a throw there. That is not Leo's form. That flying string hand there, just maybe a little unsettled, feeling the, feeling the pressure a little bit. Nine. Demmer's on a little bit of a run. Let's see if Leo can tighten this up a little bit. He needs to run a better scout arrow on this second arrow. That's Nine. better. Mm -hmm. So you see the difference between that oh, follow yeah. through his on the second arrow. That release hand. It came right past his ear, mm -hmm. straight back. Ten. Demmer is just pounding, man. He's feeling it. 11, 10, 9. Let's see if Leo can keep the gap small here. Nine. All right. That's a pretty good arrow. Five point game. Bear bow close. All right, Leo. Welcome back to the Lancaster Archery Classic final stage. How's it feel up there? Feels amazing. Just as good as last time. Just as good as last time. I want to ask you about that shirt right there. Dean Alberga, Pro Staff. Call out your coach. Where is he over there? I think Dean's somewhere right there. He's. I have his shirt on because my shirt didn't arrive on time. So. All right, so representing Dean over there. Is he a good coach? Awesome coach. Takes some pretty good pictures, doesn't he? He really does. Hey, be sure you follow along our social media. Any of the pictures that you see from our finals taken by Dean Alberga. A little bit of a recap as we take a look at his Leo's first arrow. You saw that big flying hand here. There's a better shot right, right there. So that was great. The first Rolling hand, those back to back. John Demmer, 30. Leo of course, Peterson, his coach, he's talking about Dean Alberga, multi talented mm -hmm. on the archery front. He, is also the photographer for World Archery, and Dean also is a big motorcycle enthusiast. Ah, doing you know track something days, about that, don't you? Doing track days on a on a 125 uh, GP bike great. when he's back home in Europe. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Greg also does this commentary for <laughs> motorsports as well in the motorsport community. It's a different pace. <laughs> I'm sure. It's a different pace. 25, 30. 10. So this is going to be really interesting. So Demmer comes out seated eighth. Somebody like him, with his skill set, with his familiarity with the stage, he's going to go up against these archers that are Six. just feeling out the stage for the first time. So he's the more comfortable he gets, the more dangerous he gets. I think this is shaping up to be Nine. he can make a run. If anybody can do this, if anybody can come into the finals, eighth seed, he has the skill set to make the run all the way to the finals. But he has some really talented archers like Leo here that are standing in his way. <laughs> Just like looks, like, looks like Leo is hearing me talk right now. <laughs> and he's not going to lay down and roll over too easy. Nine. All right, John's shooting some really good arrows here, keeping them in the gold. Let's see if Leo can do here. He's got to keep this gap minimized between the score. I mean, if he shoots an 11, it's a tie end. Oh, a little bit All out right, to the left. That's it. Demmer's lead increases to a comfortable eight points. Mr. Demmer, have you ever come in as the eighth seed before into the finals? No, uh, had a little struggle bus. I got extremely lucky today. So I'm just happy to be here in eighth place. So, so all, all you gotta do is give yourself a chance. You never know what can happen. That's right. Do you got, the, you got the strength to go eight matches, do you think? You know, I am almost a senior. We'll, we'll find out, hopefully. <laughs> All right, there you go. We'll see if John Demmer can get past Leo Pedersen first, however. First of all, 
Okay, it's Masters here at the Lancaster <laughs> Archery Classic. Uh, that's great. Don't call them seniors. Right? Seniors, 50-plus <laughs> now with USA yeah, Archery, Masters. Great. It's a variety of that's things. That's right. The old guys. The, yeah, <laughs> that's my class. That's it. That's I love my it. people. So PJ made reference to, are you getting tired up here? So John is a huge proponent. We talk about this a lot, that you should never come to a tournament not being able to shoot 200 arrows in a row and not be fatigued. So fatigue is not a thing for Demer. Nine, so. You know, to talk about oh, does he does he have matches and like can he can he withstand staying up there? I think the mental fatigue is a thing, but physically, this guy shoots plenty. He puts a big focus on his endurance coming into these tournaments. So shooting seven matches in a row is nothing for this guy or any of these top archers. And I think what you're saying too, Matt, is that that goes across all archery disciplines. Absolutely. I, I think there's a Absolutely. lot of coaches out there that will tell you. You know, if you're going to practice for a 30 round Vegas, you know, 30 arrow Vegas round, you should be practicing at least two. Oh, and that, you know, yeah, especially exactly. on the compound side where things are a little different. Absolutely, you're kind of using your muscles in a different way. Where here, I mean, he's looking really good. Yeah, he's looking good. He has a flow. He's comfortable up there. I can see it in his eyes as he's approaching that aim. It's a very soft aim. His break and follow through looks great. Eight. And Leo is just struggling here to, to move that group over to the right. Great shooting from these archers Ten here. Point Leo, gap. tell us a little bit about the Berbo scene in Sweden. The Berbo scene in Sweden is, in my opinion, one of the best in the world. We have people like Eric, Lina, Martin Ottesson, Fredrik Lundmark. So we've got a bunch of great tutors. You have, what did I see here? Four-time European champ, 13 world records. How old are you? I'm 20 years old, so this is my first year as a real senior. <laughs> as a real senior? <laughs> I think he just called you old, Demmer. <laughs> All right. That's so great. Ah, uh, the comedy. <laughs> you'll notice, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll notice these guys are wearing the same shirts, the same jerseys. These are new this year. These are official Hoyt Pro Staff shirts. They're white. Um, so these are not the jerseys that you can just buy off the Hoyt website uh, because you're using their equipment. So these are actually awarded to these archers um, who have signed. Uh, and Leo here just made the switch and got signed by Hoyt in December. And so he had been historically shooting Gillo risers, um, but now over the last month and a half or so, he's been running this new Hoyt bow with the bare bow weight on there. And looks like it's doing pretty well for him, making the big stage. There you wow. go. Nice shot. Nice shot to capitalize and close that gap. If we're looking arrow by arrow, you know, Demer shoots an eight. That closes the gap by three points. Ten. We noticed that for Pedersen, Left, left, left. How do you, as a barebow shooter, get that thing back yep. to so, the right? So we're still using elevated rests, rests and plungers. So just like Olympic archery, we can, we can, if he's hitting left, he can unscrew his plunger a click or two, maybe three, start slowly moving it over. And also we're aiming off the tip of our arrow. So we don't have any rear sight. We don't have a peep. Nine. We use the string in our sight picture to line it up with a landmark on our riser. That's called our string blur. So he could basically, if he wants to move that right, he can move his string blur in his sight picture left and move that rear sight to the left, which would make his Seven. impacts move to the right. But he's still struggling here to, to move that over to the right. And this, this is, that is the last end of this match. There we go. And it looks like John Demmer is going to continue to march up the leaderboard. Love it. Coming in eighth place. Let's now make, Let's see a run. Yeah. Now he guarantees himself. At least sixth place. Absolutely. As we wait for the official score. All right, let's talk real quick while we have a moment. Thepusharchery.com. Yes. Yeah, thepusharchery.com. That is the website I own and operate. We are a we are a traditional archery and barebow brand where we have a YouTube channel, we have a podcast, and we have an online school with some of the great barebow and traditional coaches in the community. John Demmer, we have an online course by him if you want to learn how to shoot barebow. We have biomechanics and form classes as well as mental classes in our online school called the Push Archery Center of Knowledge. So if you're interested whatsoever in single string archery, whether that's traditional bow hunting or barebow competitive archery, check out our YouTube channel, our podcast, and our online school. You can find it at thepusharchery.com. All right, let's get to PJ.
the action rolling. Our number six qualifier from Mount Vernon, Kentucky, Kyle Coffey. titles, two collegiate national records. You get to choose. Kyle Coffey coming in here. here we two go. years of shooting. Yep. And this is what we talk about in Barebo. You're going to see such a variety of top athletes, some brand new to the sport, That's some right. that have been here for 30, 40 <laughs> years. You know, Kyle, I, I like the the uh, disparity between his picture here that we're seeing on mm -hmm. his bio versus his actual personality, because he looks pretty tough here, but whenever you get to meet him, he is the nicest guy ever. You can see him out there smiling right now. <laughs> he was smiling his entire way through the eliminations. I caught up with him before the finals here, and he just, he says, I'm feeling great. I made it further than I thought I was gonna make it, and this is just gravy. So he's just having a good time out here. And he gets to stand on stage next to the legend. That's right. That's John right. Demmer. Okay, good strong scout arrow here to check the lighting. Ten. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that's a way to. Like, did did he even like that? That's like, a way, it looked, that's a way to go. Initially, it looked like he didn't like it, but then I'm thinking maybe he celebrated so, that shot. That's great that you're saying. So we got, uh, you can see the target differences here. John shooting a three-spot target. We got, uh, we got Kyle shooting a single-spot target, and he said to me. You know I make a really good shot, and I'm proud of it, when my bow arm drops, like, violently right after the arrow hits okay. the target. All right. So let's watch for that. Okay, so, he, so he's not happy with that, and he wasn't happy with the 10 either. And he said, you'll see me shoot a 9 or a 10 and shake my head because I wasn't happy with my execution. Okay, John shooting an 8 here. Needs to capitalize on, on Kyle getting used to this pressure, getting used to the lighting, throwing a 6 out there. Kyle moved him to move Denver over. Kyle, Kyle and, moved him. And what we saw last match was that a little bit left yep. coming from target number one. Absolutely. See if Denver is able to make that adjustment. And that's a nice clean shot. His break's looking nice and short and fluid, just like Denver does. Kyle Coffey, welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic State. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, this is your first time up here? Yep. Have you been to the Classic before? I was here once the year before last. Shooting barebow. Yes. All right. What is it that you like about barebow? It's just the fun of it. I shot compound for a couple years, and I switched, and it's just so much more fun. The atmosphere and everything. Those compound guys, they're boring, aren't they? Definitely. That's all right. You can say it in here. We know it. How about boring necessarily, <laughs> but I get, I get that. Big shout it's out. definitely way more lively here. Big shout out to the Union Archery, Union College Archery team that may be here or listening in, watching your teammate go out of Barberville, Kentucky. Shoots for the Barebow team there. Uh, just a super proud moment for that team, I'm sure. Absolutely. All right, second end. Second end. Of four. Here we go. 26 to 25. Let's see what these guys can do. Let's see if Kyle can put a little bit more pressure on, clean up that group a little bit, try to prevent those blues, keep it golden in, and he'll be just fine. And our scoring provided by Dead Center Archery Products. You can see he is not happy with how these shots are breaking. Maybe some nerves still. Yeah, maybe some nerves. It's a different experience being on that stage. Seven. And there, Demmer, he did not like that. That shot looked a little fast. Again, left, left, left for yep, Demmer. Absolutely. And that position looks like it. You know, Leo was hitting left while he's over there. Mm -hmm. So there might be a little bit of a lighting issue going on. Eight. All right. So Kyle's not looking too pleased with these shots and how they're breaking. It's looking good to me. I can't wait to see when he makes a good one. Yeah, right. Me too. Nine. There we go. I think Demmer's getting a little punchy. He definitely looks different than he did the last two matches. Seven. Yep, shaking his head. Opening up the door for Demmer to keep the pedal on. Looks like we have a two-point game on official scoring coming into the third end. John Point is one of our sponsors here at the Classic, and they are now a big supporter of Barebo. Run through your equipment there and tell us why you shoot Hoyt. Uh, it's a GMX3 25-inch. I got the two 20-ounce uh, um, options for the, uh, the Hoyt weight, lighter plunger, uh, AED style beat breast. 
BCY strings, Jaeger grip, Yoast tab. Um, I don't know. I just like uh, the output. So you're Aaron. Uh, right now it's uh, Robbie Westinger's uh, 6.0 <laughs> um, Sonics. That I Does he know you're shooting them? Yeah, I, I pretty much took him out of his quiver about two hours ago. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I shoot for Hoyt because, I mean, it's a, a, there's a great person behind Hoyt that does a fantastic job with the recurves, and I can't ever thank Doug Denton enough. Give us his name. We all know him. Doug Denton, baby. Woo, Doug Denton. All right, John. And that new weight, that's a new weight this year. That is the new, that's their new weight, yes. All right. Thanks, John. Yes, we appreciate everything Hoyt does. As we look at Cal Coffey deliver his last three arrows, let's talk about that weight that yeah. Demers talking about. Absolutely. Give us a little insight onto that. Okay, so bear bow, we have to, we can't have stabilizers on our bows. So there is a rule. We have an inspection gauge when we look at equipment inspection at these big tournaments. It is basically a metal ring. That is 12.2 centimeters, so a little over four inches in inner diameter. And what you got to do is you got to slide that ring up your entire bow, over your limbs, over your riser. And we can add weights to our bow um, above and below the grip to get it to balance and, and react the way we want it, as long as it fits through that ring. And that ring, interestingly enough, 12.2 centimeters seems random. That's the diameter of the 10 ring on a 50 meter uh, outdoor target, so like an, a big 122 centimeter target. Um, so Demmer here throwing a, an eight over there on his first arrow, nine on his second. But the barebow weight that Hoyt developed is really interesting. It's off center, drilled through off center, so you can rotate it and hang the weight off the left and right side of the riser to minimize bow torque. And again, no stabilizers in this class, so we're doing everything we can to get these bows to balance vertically, nine. so it jumps straight to target. And that weight is a really neat design. Yeah, as more innovation continues to advance in the bare bow class, based around those rules. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You know, look, it's bare bow, Kyle. Shooting <laughs> in the yellow is a good thing. Looking good. <laughs> Here's PJ. Let's, let's talk about your gear. What do you got? A GLO GT27 riser with the Uka limbs, and then a A rest and a biter plunger. The Arcor Jay Kaminsky grip, and then the 3D HB arrows with spider veins and spider knocks, and the Tomcat tabs tap. All right, well, I should ask, you said you're going for your master's. What are you getting your master's in? Education. I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. A lot of teachers. A lot of teachers in archery. Who knew? Okay. Two point game here, Greg. Final end. Coffee trying to advance to shoot against our fifth place qualifier. Here we go. You know, they mentioned Hoyt. They we're talking about Hoyt. You know, Gillow and Hoyt are two of the larger riser manufacturers that have really put a focus on bare bow. It's really cool to see some of these big manufacturers recognizing the amount of views these bare bow finals. Oh, baby. These bare bow finals are pulling and they're investing R&D money into satisfying the bare bow community and the bare bow class, which is just so cool and it's helping us grow. Let's watch these final couple arrows here. So Demmer just needs to keep the pedal down here. Five point lead coming into the second arrow. Nice smooth break. Mm -hmm. I don't think he liked the execution of that shot. You can see his follow through was a little punchy. It didn't come back past his ear in classic Demmer fashion. Let's see what Greg can do here. Kyle, I'm sorry. Hey. There's, a, there's a traditional boyer that makes longbows in the traditional community called Greg Coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's hard for me to say that. Ten. Oh, wow. what a great end. What a great end. What a great end to end on. It's, looks like Denver's going to oh, yeah. advance. Absolutely. Eight. To shoot up against our here fourth place qualifier. Oh, man. Denver's oh. making a run. <laughs> Great showing by Kyle. Congratulations to Kyle Coffey. 20 years old, just awesome. Awesome showing. And Kyle said he made it further than he thought. Yep. And he's happy about that. It's a it. great smile in the whole way, baby. Yeah, a great chat from Demmer. Yep. Hope to see Kyle Coffey back here for many years. We'll get our official score in, uh, in a second, but Kyle Coffey is going to finish in sixth place at the Classic. So sixth place for Kyle Coffey. Take home 600 bucks for his effort in the hotly contested barebow category. Hey, barebow is so popular here at the Lancaster Archery Classic that only it, and then you have the 
compound open category where all the pros shoot. Yep. S cut the 64. I mean, there's only a couple of classes that cut the 64. Archer, I believe we're at, right? All right, let's go to PJ. That was six. I lost count already. He's fourth. All right. He's fourth, man. Look at this screen. <laughs> I thought it was wrong. <laughs> all right, let's bring out our fourth seed from Stoughton, Wisconsin, Nicholas Way. Here's Nick Way, and I thought my two worlds were going to merge into one, mo motorcycle racing and archery, <laughs> because I know a Nick Way from oh, the gotcha. side, but it's not him. It's That's not him. <laughs> Only three years shooting for this athlete. That's right. And if indoor Nats, third place. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a very nice resume. Only been shooting Barebo for two years. Um, he's been shooting for three total, a Barebo for two. He's competed in the Indoor Nationals, NFAA Indoor Nationals, the Rushmore Rumble, like it said there on the graphic, finished third in the USA Archery Indoor Nationals and third at the NFAA Indoor Nationals. Feeling good, I talked to him before the big show here. Feeling good, feeling relaxed. You can see here, Nick Way, he is not crawling down the string like Demer is here. So you can see that Nick Way's fingers are slid up against the knock on his draw right there, no crawl. So with his bow's poundage, his higher anchor that you can see him anchoring up his face, mm -hmm. the length of his arrow, the weight of his arrow, he can get it to where he does not have to crawl and he can put the tip of his arrow right on the gold at 20 yards and hit there. So this is a very specific bare bow indoor tune that he's created specifically for this game. This is not a tune that he would use for outdoor 3D um, or field archery or the likes. Very interesting. Yep. So Demmer here. See what he can do. He's looking Nine. calm. He has that look in his eye like he did in the first two matches. That third match, he just looked a little off. Very happy to see him kind of get that back together. Nick, welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. Is this your first time up here? It is. Have you been to the Classic before? Never. First time for both. What brought you out there, and how does it feel to be up there? Um, I guess my brother brought me out here, um, and it feels good. Feels, feels good. good. Not nervous at all, right? I wasn't until I stood up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Hey, run through your equipment for us. Let's see what you're shooting. I have the Hoyt Axia limbs, Hoyt Exceed Riser, Hoyt Weight, Sprig Rest. Um, I guess it's the Biter Plunger. I got a Yost tab. Uh, got my sweet um, Lucky Vortex shirt. So. Oh, and I got the Easton RX-7s. You guys must know somebody at Hoyt. I haven't even seen these weights yet. You guys are shooting them in competition. Definitely more famous than me. <laughs> I don't think anybody's more famous, famous than PJ Riley. Not archery anyway, yeah. <laughs> PJ Riley's my spirit animal. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. He gets to shoot a lot of different stuff. Yeah, that's And right. uh, yeah, he is definitely uh, one of the top testers yep. of equipment Absolutely. in archery. No Does that, of course, for Lancaster yeah. Archery Supply. What kind of advice do you give JV3 when he's up on the stage? Well, on our drive over here, I said, I don't know why you picked me to be in your box, because when I'm here, it's going to be good. There we go. We're looking at our, some of our official sponsors here in the Barebow Division. We have CD Archery, great company by Calvin and, and Dwayne. And then we have Yoast Archery Products that make great Barebow weights, as well as tabs. Uh, great official sponsors here of the Barebow Division. So we're right. looking to support some of our companies that support us here at the Lancaster Classic. Go check out cdarchery.com as well as yostarcheryproducts.com to check out all their great product offerings. All right, so we're getting ready for our second end of competition as we just have a there we go. slight delay. Slight delay. <laughs> OK, I'm going to reset the graphics for scoring. So as we're standing here, we can see this shot. If you look right past Nick Way, you'll see his Brian, or you'll see his brother Brian Way. Brian made the big stage last year in the 2023 Classic. Had a great showing. I think he came out number six or seven uh, in the final seed. He got knocked out in his first match. However, that inspired his brother Nick to come to the Lancaster Classic this year. And here we go. 
very talented brother duo there, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure his brother's really happy he brought his brother. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, look at him sitting in the finals. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So Nick Way, the way he runs, so he's what we call a gapper. So he's not string walking. His fingers are right up against the knock. And he is focusing on the X, not the arrow. Some of us barebow archers, we focus on the arrow and have the target blurry. Some archers have the target in focus and the arrow tip blurry. Uh, so Nick is definitely a person that focuses on that X. He's burning a hole in it. He's running his shot. He triggers his shot off the feeling of increasing tension in his back after the aim slows down. Oh. I mean, as soon as he let that go, There's, he put a smirk on his face. That's like he right. Knew he knew exactly where it was this going. This is Bearbow right there. Yeah. Out swimming in the ocean. John Hammond, you seem to be getting stronger as the matches go on. Here, I thought you were going to get weaker. <laughs> well, I feel weaker, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That'd be a pretty, le this would add to your legend, John, if you could go from eight up to number one. Never had that in Barabo before. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Lee, Lee gave it a good run. I'm just trying to match Lee's uh, performance from a couple years ago. Correct, Lee did have a good run a couple years ago. After two innings. Here we go, Nick Way's recap here, looking at his arrows with a solid 10. Let's see his last arrow here. This was the, the six or the five, yep. There we go, all right. We're coming into the third end of competition. Demmer has a very comfortable nine point lead. Let's see what he can do here. All he has to do is just keep his nice flow and form, nice soft aim, and there we go. So Demmer is known, we saw him do this last year, where he, what we call pull a Demmer, and he hits far right side when he has a little bit of a clutch. Plenty of time on the clock. And look at that, he did this earlier, yep. right? So where he got up, something wasn't right, he had to let down, and he just puts a monster 10 on the scorecard. Eight. Nick responds with an eight. Let's see if Demmer can calm that down a little bit. There we go. This is great. It's okay. No problem. It's All right. Okay. 18 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time. You can hear the barebow crowd clapping. It is so hard to let these bows down. Yeah, talk about parking your ego, right? Yep. Seven, okay. So that one didn't pay these. off, but yeah. he's, he's two That's for right. three on letdowns. That's right. And 11 to 10, and now that. 10. Oh, there we go. That is the exact arrow that Nick needed to put on there. Demmer is clearly working through some stuff mentally here on this end. Nick needs to put the pressure on now. Now is the time. Nine. Demmer has a good follow through there. That was a good, comfortable shot. That was a great arrow for him. Let's see what Nick can do here. Eight. All right. He needed a little bit better on that arrow. Great Still a nine point game. Away, Here's the letdown oh, here. Wisconsin. You can see so as he's aiming, a little bit of a clutch it. here. So there it is, and he holds on to that string. Right. Ooh, you can see him more leaf. Yeah, that's a little giddy up right yeah, there. Absolutely. You see that a lot with, uh, with compound shooters, especially command shooters, where they're aiming, aiming, and then rhythmically you want to get the shot off, right. but it's just not in the spot you want. And sometimes you catch it, and sometimes you that's don't. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we saw finals here today where it looked like one of the shooters just came off the back wall, wasn't really committed to the shot, and just missed the target oh, altogether. Man. And you that's know, crushing in compound. It, it's crushing in front of this crowd too, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it definitely is. How do you and dig yourself out of that mentally? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, those things do happen, and, and uh, you know, it just shows kind of the mental strength that Demmer has, but also just the amount of arrows that he shot, you yep. know? be able to catch that and then to say, whoa, that was a close one. In recognizing and being so familiar and intimate with your shot process to know if there's an error in the shot process, you don't have to shoot no. that arrow. You have plenty of time. There's 30 seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. This was a great leading arrow from Brian coming into our final end here. John's 11. looking good. There was a little bit of a hitch there, but that is the arrow John needed to put in there. Ooh, eight. Nick throws an eight. Definitely a fast tempo shot. Demmer just needs to stay comfortable up there. Just do what he does best. Eight. Okay. That's Throws okay. Out to the eight. I think yeah. he's still comfortable. We have an 11-point game here. 
So something has to go very wrong here Ten. for Demmer not to walk away with Just. that. He needs a, two, a three or better to put this game away. Oh, well, two or better. The scores just got updated. And that's it. Do that it. was a little fast, but that's enough to seal the deal. And of course, Demmer shooting oh, a single spot, so all he had available was a six. That's right. Good like point. a six or more. Good yeah. point. Good point. All right, Demmer's continuing his run. Super happy to see this. If anybody can do it, he's the guy that can do it. Incredible performance. Take home seven hundred dollars. Congratulations, Nick. Thanks for coming out. And that is our official score: one ten to one hundred and one. All right. Let's bring out our number three seed from. Reggio Emilia, Italy, Simon Barbary. Coming fresh off a second place finish in Nîmes. Simon Barbier, Barbieri, that's how Simone he, Barbieri. <laughs> so I, I talked to him before the show. I'm like, how do you pronounce your last name? He's Barbieri. Barbieri. Very, very, Simone Barbieri. That's, that's right. Very, very good archer here from Italy. Uh, Three-year shooting, 2024 Nimes runner-up, the Nimes Classic Indoor Tournament. Very, very great archer here. A um, lot to say about this guy. Three-year shooting, bare bow, and he's already here. He competed, he shoots a lot in Italy. Italy, one of their main focuses is field and outdoor 3D. Indoor archery is not a huge focus with these very talented Italian archers. Um, the Italian archers are no uh, stranger to the Barebow finals here. Cinzia in the women's division is no stranger to the final stage. And here we go, we have Simon, first scout arrow, needs to be powerful. And that was a great shot, Greg. Mm -hmm. Greg. We got another archer here with a slightly different approach, and we'll talk about that here. So if you watch, <laughs> oh, come on. That's a great way to start it off, put the pressure back on Simon. But you'll watch Demmer's form is very fluid. It's what we call more of a barebow form. It's not as an aggressive of a shot break. And you can see, see here Simon has a really low anchor, and watch, he's going to power through this. Tension growing and a, and a big dynamic wow. follow through. Very Olympic archery-esque in his approach to shooting this simple bow. Okay, is Simon putting a little bit of pressure on Demmer here? Let's see. Simon making a crawl. Let's watch him come into anchor. A little bit of forward pressure on his bow arm side, pushing straight at the target, and a good solid shot right there. Look yeah. at that, look at that, Greg. Yeah. 31 to step out here and put the pressure on. Demmer, who has been comfortable out here for the last three matches. Okay. We've and got you can definitely see the Olympic recurve influence on Simon. Simon's release. Oh, absolutely. Here's PJ. First time up here? Yes. Have you been to the Classic before? Have you been to this tournament before? First time. What made you come out? Shoot barebow, so you got to come out to the classic, right? <laughs> All right. Well, how's that feel to come out and start out with two elevens there? Good start. Good start. That'll do. You bet. All right. Well. PJ's got to work on his right. Italian a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Simon, there is a little bit of a language barrier. When I did interview him earlier before this finals, uh, he has in his coach's box uh, Giuseppe Samandi, who is a legend in the barebow community. When I was getting into barebow for the first time back in 2013, I was just absolutely obsessed with Giuseppe. He is a world archery legend. Uh, World Games gold medalist, which is the Olympics for barebow, essentially, mm. and he's done it twice. So Giuseppe in the coach's box is a great asset to have in your coach's box. 
Nine. Man, I tell you what, he is shooting a strong and powerful shot. You don't see that too often Nine. in Verbo. It's starting to become a little bit more popular, a little bit more of an aggressive shot break. Definitely a different approach, as you can see the disparity between Simon's approach and Don John's. And as you can see, there's no one way to do it here in Verbo. No. We're not pulling through a clicker. And so however you get your errors to the gold and you can do it consistently, that's what you got to do. Wow. And see, Simon, it looks like the way he string walks, he actually starts at the top and then string walks down versus some of the other shooters I've seen string walk from the bottom and go up. Interesting. Yeah, most of us, what we do is we have to have a landmark with our tab to make that crawl repeatable. So we slide the tab plate up against the bottom of the knock. So that's repeatable. You put your thumb on the marking on the string and slide the top of the tab plate down to where you had that marked on your thumb. Oh my gosh, Greg, he yep. is just, if yep. somebody can do this and stop Demers' run, it's looking like it's shaping up. It could be him. It could be him. And of course, the winner of this match is guaranteed a podium finish. And John Demer started this an hour ago, coming from eighth place. Absolutely. All right, so PJ is trying to go to a PJ's having a quick conversation. I'm interested to see pulling out the arrows if we see a knock. It kind of sounded like there was a bit of a glance. <laughs> there out. was a little bit of contact yeah. there. There's no doubt about it's it. It's hard for us to really determine. Normally, with the headsets off, if you're listening, you can tell the difference between carbon slapping carbon, which is sometimes more of an impact point, yes. than an actual like contact of a of a plastic knock, and then it shattering around. Yes. So, all right. So we have two ends completed of this four ends total. Our score looks like Simon Barbieri at 61 and John Demmer at 55. Man, we have a six-point game coming into the third end. This is just going to be great. So John is just going to have to leverage a lot of his experience in these high-pressure situations. This is not the first time that John has been here trailing by a few points. And again, this is Barebo. Anything can happen. But Simon's looking like he's keeping that tight group, man. He's he's, done, he's yeah. breaking consistently strong shots and keeping them in the gold. And there's nothing Demmer can say to him to even break his concentration <laughs> because true. of the language barrier. Yeah, that's right. That's right. At least that's what Simon's telling us. Yep. And so you can see Simon has a little bit of tape on his nose. So for us to get our alignment where we need to go and aim down that arrow, sometimes the knock or the string brushes our nose. And that doing that after a 200 arrow practice session, your nose is a bloody mess. So here we go. Demmer made up two points there. This is what he needed to do. He closed the gap to four points. Simon just needs to keep doing what he's going to do. Keep his process nice regimented. You can see a little shake there going on in his string hand, maybe some nerves. Yeah, hit the 12 ring, that'll be an eight. All right. We got an eight. Yeah. Had he called the 12th, but he, he didn't. It. Yep. Could have extended that lead. Demers keeping it in the gold, and that's all he needs to do here. So again, closes the gap by one more point. Final arrow, third end, three-point game. Let's see what Simon does here, if he can keep this consistent for the ninth arrow in a row, keeping it in the gold. I'm sorry, he hit the eight on the last eight. Arrow. All right, mm -hmm. looks like he's getting drawn down a little bit. Getting arrows getting pulled, a little magnet behind that 12 ring, it looks like. <laughs> oh, oh, that is what John needed to tie this match up, Greg. Here we go. This place is going wild. There it is. One in to go. And Demmer with the momentum to tie the match up. And trust me, the Italian feels it. He hears it, and he feels it from this crowd as well. Absolutely. And his coach telling him just to calm down, just to be calm. That's it. But look at that. You know, Simon Simon does, I mean, he does, puts up a 25, which was uncharacteristic of him based off of his first two ends. He was shooting 27s, 28s, 29s there in the first two ends. And, uh, you know, throws a 25. And Demmer just puts a monster 31 point end up there, closes the gap. And now we've got a game, Craig. There's a, sh there's a shot of John up there on the championship wall. No stranger to the final stage, Mr. John Demmer. He's here every year. He looks like he's uh, setting up shop. I think he's going to maybe sleep here tonight. He's been up on that stage for so long. Yeah, he's, been, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's grinding. Yeah. He is on the grind. Absolutely. And like PJ said, winner of this match is guaranteed a podium spot, which is 
comforting for sure. But whoever wins this match has a long road in the next two matches to the gold medal. Seven. Oh, now the door is wide, wide open. My goodness. Wide open. Let's see what John can do here. Can he capitalize on this? Nine. Okay, there Couple we points. go. Up two points, two errors to go. Demmer didn't look extremely happy with that because no. he knew he had a larger swing yeah. at his fingertips. Yep. But still, two is better than one. Good shot of Simon's back tension here. Bang. 11. That was a beautifully ran shot under pressure. These next two arrows for John are just going to be pressure cookers. Can he keep it together? And it looks eight. like he throws an eight here. This is going to be tight now. One point. One point. The down to the last arrow. It is. You can hear a pin drop in here. Barbieri to set the tone for this last arrow. Let's see what he can do here. Nine. Oh, leaves the door slightly open. John has to put a very solid arrow in here. Eleven to win, a ten to tie. Let's go. It's possible. Nine. Oh, and there it goes. Just a bit outside. Simon knocks down, stops Demers, march to the podium. Incredible showing by John Demmer, legend of our sport. Love that guy so much. Incredible, incredible performance. The most consistent bare bow archer in playing the game right now. Very sad to see him go, but very excited to see what Simon can do here for the next two matches. Excellent effort there, John Demmer. Waiting for official score, but it's going to look like a one-point match. Hey, you gave a good run. We certainly appreciate that, everything you do for the sport. He's still looking, hoping maybe, maybe pull the line or something. Nope. <laughs> 113 to 112. John Denver's going to go home in fourth place and take home $800. Congratulations, John Denver. All right, let's bring out our number two seed. We saw him just a few minutes ago from Avesta, Sweden, Eric Johnson. Five years shooting five time field world champ, legend of the sport, of course. Pro Berbo, uh, Archer out of Sweden. Uh, that is his career. He trains all the time. This guy has the potential to put up monster scores anytime he steps to the line. I actually just flipped back in my notes here using the same binder for the last few years for this. And Eric, last year I reported out when he was on the final stage, he has shot in practice five 297s with a bare bow, 1,298, 1,299, and he achieved last year a perfect 300 with a bare bow in practice. So he is, his potential is sky high. Last year, uh, the pressure got to him. I talked to him a little bit before these finals. He's hoping that being comfortable, more uncomfortable up on stage here, he's gonna shoot a good strong sh scout arrow here, get a check and get a beat on the lighting. That's a good solid shot. We can move, work from here. Let's see what Simon does. Let's see if the bump, Eric pumped him over to the left platform. Let's see if that has any changes to the lighting. Maybe shaking up Simon's impacts a little bit. Okay, looks like it did, just a little bit. Now he's got to get comfortable. He knows what it's doing. If, as long as he was happy with that shot execution, he can make a few adjustments and get that threading right into the goal again. We've seen so many archers in Barebow shoot left on that target number one when they get moved over. Yep. Absolutely. There just must be something with that lighting for us bear bowers. The way the lighting's hitting that shaft, aligning slightly left of gold. Well, Simon he there. fixed it. A real quick correction. Two points coming into the last arrow. Eric just needs to shoot a shot. Little, looks quick a one. little, a little <laughs> hitchy. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's a little, little shake, a little flinch going on in Eric's back end of his shot. But I'm sure he'll get that cleaned up here by the next end. 
Simon just needs to put a good, solid shot in here to put the pressure on. Oh, little hitch there. You heard the crowd murmur. Yep. Oh, throws it out. See, but that's what we talked about with Demmer. The ability to, to let down and right. reset your shot. That's right. You have enough time to do it. It's a 30-second shot clock. So unofficially 27, 26. Here's BJ. Classic stage. How's it feel to be back up there? Yeah, good. Hey, can you run through your equipment for me? Tell me what you're shooting today. Uh, I'm shooting the new Gilu GF. Uh, Gilu limbs. I have a sniper rest and plunger. Yoast tab. Eastern 23 Supervisors. Right, Yoast tab there. The Yoast family, big supporters of Barebo community. Love to hear that name. Uh, Matt, I'm, I'm curious, uh, just on the barebow side of things, we've seen a lot of these archers that are going to shoot larger diameter arrows yep. shooting a lot of carbon yeah. and not a lot of aluminum. Is That's there any right. particular reason for that, the way maybe carbon comes off of a barebow or something? Well, we're holding the full weight of this bow back, but we're also not holding Olympic weight. So when you look at like Brady Ellison, those guys are running 50 to 55 pounds outdoor and indoor, so they can use those larger diameter aluminum arrows and get them spined well. Uh, for barebow, we're holding 35 to 44 pounds, roughly in there. So it's kind of like a spine thing. So you can get a carbon arrow in that 500 spine at a 23 diameter. But when you're looking at uh, an aluminum arrow, typically you're down in like the 400 spine, maybe 350 spine. And sometimes you just can't get those to tune. I will say that the 23s are becoming more and more popular in the barebow community. We're starting to see them more. Um, I would say maybe three to four years ago, a lot of skinny diameter arrows like we see Simon shooting here, but definitely more 23s coming onto the scene. I talked to Eric before the show and uh, asked him, anything change from last year? He said, nope, just one year older. <laughs> so running a new Gillow GF riser, but his shot execution and process has been unchanged since the last time we saw him on this big stage. Let's focus in on these scores here, Greg, for a minute. Simon threw a six there, which is big. Now that let Eric get tied back up, we are tied coming into the last arrow of the second end. So that was a big swing for Eric to be able to capitalize on that. Okay, Eric here. Let's see what he's got going. Nice letdown by Eric. This is great. You can hear the crowd applauding, enjoying it. We know how hard that is to let this bow down. A little bit, little bit fast on that shot, but man, did that impact beautifully. Lena steps up, gives him a fist bump. Three-point lead coming into the last end, or I'm sorry, this, the third end of this epic competition. Two international archers here on the big stage traveling to the Lancaster Classic, Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Just amazing. Cutting that 11 ring there. Guys hanging out, trying to burn off some of this pressure. No interaction How between the two. For our judges? They've been working hard all night. PJ calling out, giving the judges an applause here. All these workers here. There's a little recap. Let's watch Eric's arrows. Pay attention to the hook he has on that string. Shop rates are looking nice. There it is. See that third finger? hanging off the string, using two fingers to hold back that weight. Beautiful 11. And here we go, third end, 50 to 53. Loading them up, got bullets in the chamber. Here we go, and number three. Eric's making his crawl here, getting his hook on the string. You can see his hand rotate out, not a lot of pressure on that third finger. Great execution. The camera didn't even go to the target, and we could hear Lena giving a shout of approval from the coach's box. Simon here. He's run a good, strong shot. And that left stage seems to be really messing with Simon's impacts here. Eric's at full draw. Oh, great letdown. Applause from the crowd, as expected. Six-point game, second arrow. Third end. Here we go. Oh, another hitch. He doesn't have time. Ten seconds, nine. And he still squeaks out a nine with that. That just shows composure, knowing your shot process. Incredible. Simon with a nice 
long crawl there, getting that arrow right under his eye. Aims at the gold. Nine. Got his nine. Let's see what Eric can do here. Oh, another hitch. He's hitching every year. Let's go. Nine. Okay, he's not happy with that, but you know what? Those arrows are impacting, which just shows his great alignment. Good bow arm. Let's see what Simon can do here. He needs to put a 10 in here. 11 yes. <laughs> that'll do. That will do. Minimizing the gap. Okay, so here's here's a shot of Eric's little hitches. It's coming up here in two seconds. Oh, there it is. He holds it up. He ran out of time, so he's running his shot. So Lena's talking. The hitches <laughs> happen a lot to Eric. That's great. Okay, gotcha. All right. Judges well, are doing a line call there, getting the, but not, getting the uh, magnifying glass hand. out. You know, we got a great crowd in here tonight. I was told we had over 3,000. Bearboat community here in force. So 3,000 people listening in, watching in live over on this live stream. We've got a five point game coming into the final end. Just an exciting show. Exciting show. Looks like the arrows have been pulled, coming off the range. Through our three ends. And we're getting ready to go. to go. There's a nice Eric view of Simon's bare bow weight there at the bottom Simon of his riser. Here we go. Get the crowd pumped up. There is a cash bar here this year in the Lancaster Finals. So the crowd is a little bit more rowdy than usual, which is great. Eric here making his crawl. Let's see what he can do. Go. Another small little hitch there. Oh, oof. There we go. Let's see what Simon can do. See if he can capitalize on that. Still such a strong shot. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of fly. But I, I, he's shaking his string hand there after that shot. I don't think I don't think he liked how that shot broke. Throwing him out into the into the eight ring. He did not capitalize on Eric seven. Another letdown. I think everybody here is just applauding this and just really appreciating Eric's control. 12 seconds to go. Come on, Eric. There you go, another hitch. Oh, wow. So he knows he's not letting that string go until <laughs> everything is right. And that is just awesome control. He is battling, though, right now. He is. And it's great. But his arrow impacts are there. Simon's groups are opening up. That left stage seems to be problematic for us bear bow archers this year. And Eric there, that looked very clean. Mm -hmm. Nice shot. A little bit of a left impact, but I think that's going to be enough to do it. 12 called. 12 called. Yeah, he knows it's out of reach. <laughs> Let's go. This place will go wild if Simon can leave this great performance with a 12. Aiming low. It must be so odd having to aim low off the gold. Ten. Oh, he shoots ah. it. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And a shrug of the shoulders. That's right. 107 to 103. Eric Johnson moving on. Simon taking third place. Gold medal match coming up. Waiting for our official, score. official scores oh, being made Eric right now. All right. Great job by Simon Barbieri Great from job. Italy. I have to imagine he's going to be back. That's right. And look, he may not speak great English, but he certainly knows how this game is played. He speaks great bear bow. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> and I like how he hit the 12 and smiled when he knew it was out of reach. Absolutely. Incredible. What a great show. Amazing. We're going to have our number one seeded competitor coming out here. Let's go to PJ bring out our next competitor. And now we're going to bring out our number one seed final match of the night in Berbo from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, Reginald Huang.
There we go. We're looking at Raymond Wang here, shooting for five years. And uh, his archery highlight is today, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him standing there, strong and tough in this, in this uh, avatar shot, just looking really good, shooting for Hoyt. Here we go. Number one seeded. I got a lot to say about Raymond. Very interesting character. So Raymond, one thing that stands out about him during his qualifications, not only was he number one seeded, he shot a monster 575 qualification score. Uh, I think that's a new record for Barebo in the qualifications, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Raymond shoots a three-spot target. So he was one of the first people to do that here at the Classic in the Barebo division. And his reasoning for that is it costs him about seven points due to bounce outs. If he's using a single spot target, that's how many tens he's, this guy is capable of shooting. Wow. So he's shooting a three spot target to preserve his arrows. So he's not breaking arrows. Uh, and then also to maximize his score potential. And again, it's worth seven points to him switching to a three spot target. And he got into archery five years ago because it looked like fun. And all of a sudden he found out I was pretty good at it. That's right. That's a good, that's a good reason. And what keeps him in the sport is, as you've heard many times before, the community is awesome. It is so awesome. We have the best community in archery, and you can hear it in this crowd and the support. Ten. And all he has to do is shoot a strong scout arrow, stay with his shot process, put a little bit of pressure here on Eric. I doubt he's shooting for the 12, but just in case, it's bare bow. Nine. There we go. All right, so we have Raymond here. Let's talk about him. So his mental process here, he talks to himself, his mental mantra. When he comes up, he gets his aim. He transitions to his biomechanics, and he says, strong, smooth, and tight is what he says to himself. And he is just putting together some beautiful first arrows, really putting the pressure on Eric. Let's see if how Eric can manage this. We've got the classic Eric Johnson hitches. Okay, but that doesn't matter. You 15 know? seconds. If it's part of your process and you have control of your shot process and all the steps, 11. and there you go. <laughs> if you got a letdown to make sure you get 11, why wouldn't you, right? That's right. And you have to put out of your mind that you're sitting on this big stage in front of this huge oh, crowd. Oh, that is interesting. Very, very uncharacteristic. I don't think I saw Ray shoot. Oh, that is beautiful. I don't think I've seen Ray shoot in the blue, or even a seven yet this weekend. Let's go to PJ and meet Ray. Reginald? What do I call you, Reginald? Reggie? What do I call you? I think it was something along the lines of Reggie or... No, Reginald. Definitely Reginald. Reginald, all right. No, uh, I'm Raymond, though. I'm Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. Raymond, welcome to the Lex... <laughs> His name's right there. It says Reginald. Raymond. Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. Hey, our apologies. Raymond, welcome to Lancaster Archery Classic State. Thank you. It's pretty awesome to be here. Have you been here before? No, this is my first year. First year. And is it first year at the Classic as well? First year at the Classic. What would make you come down from BC all the way here to Lancaster to compete in the Lancaster Archery Classic? Seemed like it'd be fun. Seems like it would be fun. <laughs> is there, how's the bareboat community in uh, British Columbia? It's pretty awesome. There's a lot of support for it. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you for coming all this way to be here. You're at the first end of our match. And Eric jo uh, Johnson is a 30 Look, we've been at it for seven hours plus. <laughs> it literally did say on the screen. It did. <laughs> it did say on the screen to PJ. Yeah, yeah. That's good. It did say Reginald. Yeah. That was just a slight, slight error uh, from our great. computer. But, like, yeah. yeah Ray, but, I think Ray's probably good. Knowing Raymond, yeah, he is, he's yeah. a cool dude. It he's, says Ray on his shirt from it. here. <laughs> I can see it. So Huang going to get after it here. That's right. Second shot. Let's see what Eric can do here in the final match. Nine. Shoots a strong nine. Ray's just got to keep it, like I said, strong, smooth, and tight. That's what he tells himself in his head. He's using 23s, aluminum arrows. We talked about that a little bit on the last match. And that's a beautiful shot by Ray. What a Ray, rebound Ray, after that half shaft. Six. Ray moves on to the execution side of his shot after his float Seven. minimizes. So he comes back to full draw. He watches the aim. And then he knows to move on to his back tension when the float settles down. That means his biomechanics are right, and then he can f forget about that aim and start concentrating on execution. So he's using the aim and the, and the mounted floats to tell him, is he aligned properly? And it looks like he's aligned properly. There we go. 
great end here. Eric's opening the door a little bit with a 9.79 at 25. Let's see if Raymond can walk through that door. A 10 would give him a two-point lead coming into the third end of this matchup. There's a nice shot of Ray here from the backside. He's up on the big teleprompter. Seven, eight, oh, nine. he didn't capitalize. We got a one-point game. Huh? Seems like this third arrow is kind of yep. getting into his noodle a little sure bit. Does. I forgot to go over your equipment there. Tell me what you're shooting, Raymond. A point riser, point weight, fighter V-box, tungsten, additional tungsten weights, axial limbs, maple, fighter plunger, sniper rest. Yeah. You shoot. Oh, and my RX sevens from Easton. Yeah. All right. Raymond, there you are. You're official on the screen now, too, Raymond. All right. After two ends, we have a tie match. Eric Johnson, 56. Raymond Wang, 56. All right, here we go. Two ends to go. Two ends to go. Tied up, 56 56, Greg. This is looking good. Let's see what these guys can do. And the journey that these two have had to get to these scores is so dramatically different. I'm telling you what. With Huang with a six and an eight. Unbelievable. A couple of 11s and a couple of 10s. And now Johnson going for the 12. And as you mentioned, kind of the road to get here, uh, the eliminations were not easy for these guys. Um, you know, you would think that Ray finishing Nine. top seed number one was going to have an easier road. But, you know, he had to face in the final match to see who made the stage, Mr. Yeah. Joel Turner of Shot IQ, who was just shooting like a house on fire here this weekend. And it, it came down to X count, 111 to 111. Raymond had him by 1X wow. and moved on to the finals. And we have Eric Johnson up here. He also did not have an easy road to the finals. Nine. He had to face in his last match, Alex Melnick from Canada, who is one of the greatest bare bow archers in Canada. And they also had a one-point game to make it to the final stage. So some great shooting here in this third end. Let's see how these last arrows go. One-point game. Oh, that sounds yep. good. Yep. It's a good sign when you hear arrow slapping, right, Greg? As long as it's in the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Very good. That's true. Let's see if Raymond can put a 9 or 10 in here and keep it tight. Ten. Oh, that is what he needed. A little bit of pressure. Final end. Let's go. Can't wait. Let's go to PJ. 29-28. Eric, one in to go. How are you feeling going into this last in? Mm. Got it. It's uh, exciting. Yeah. You're feeling confident, right? Oh, yeah. That's what we wanted to hear. All right. So there it is. One end to go in the 2024 Lancaster Archery Classic for Barebo. Raymond Huang, 85. Eric Johnson, 84. Let's give it up for these guys. Last in. I got to think for Raymond, this is probably one of the biggest pressure cookers he's I'm been I'm telling in. you what, you're standing there on the platform next to Eric Johnson, an absolute legend in the sport. He is wanting this first place finish. Raymond's wants the first place finish. Who wants it more? Let's see if they can just keep it together, keep it their mind on the line, and execute their shot, and the impacts will follow. No color commentary for this end. We're just going to watch these arrows. Ray comes back to full draw, about an inch and a half crawl. And that is the arrow that you want. His coach almost comes out of the box. He's so excited. Eric at full draw. Oh, this is it. This is what we want. Let's have a strong finish here. Anything can happen in Barebo. Two points, Greg. It's quiet. You can hear a pin drop in this stadium. Nine. Oh, that's a good solid shot. That's OK. That's OK. And 11 here ties it up. Oh, he's fighting it. There he goes. No problem. Nice let 20 down. seconds. 20 seconds. Plenty of time. Yep. Plenty of time. Got another one in his bank if he needs it. Here we go. That looks good. I tell you what, we've got a one-point game, final arrow. Pressure is high. Eli! 
Oh, oh. that is what we wanted to see, Greg. Let's 12 call, go. Though. 12 called. He's There's a got chance. It. He's got to go for the 12. 12 and this is what this tournament is all about with that 12. This could tie it. Jumping around. Why don't we take a moment to recap as oh, we wait for the official score for goodness. you, folks. Unbelievable last arrow. Well, say, I meant to do that. Aiming for the 12, so that's good. Yep. <laughs> Never has that had. I don't think there's been a 12 in Barbo before. <laughs> Especially not like that to tie it up. Is that his official? 116 to 116, what's better than Verbo? Shoot off in Verbo! So now we're gonna hear from our judge. He's gonna tell us how the shoot off is gonna work. Thanks for making it exciting. We're going into a shoot off. We're going to shoot a one hour shoot off. First arrow for score. If we're still tied, we'll shoot a second arrow for score. If we're still tied, we'll shoot a third arrow that will be measured for to closest to the center. Closest wins. 12 plays. 12 is in play. Raymond, you had the choice last. You get to choose to shoot first or second. You're going to shoot first. You will shoot second. One arrow each, guys. All right, here we go. Greg, unbelievable finish. Needed a 12 to keep this thing moving, and Eric just shoots a strong, confident, no hitch, no flinch arrow right into the 12. I'm nervous, man. Score on this first arrow. Yep, we're going by score, not closest to the middle. 30 seconds on the clock. 12 is called just in case. I doubt he's aiming for the 12, but you never know. Maybe he wants to go out in glory. <laughs> That would be something. Here we go. My phone is blowing up right now. People are going nuts out there. Everyone watching live. Let's see what happens here. Nine. That's a solid arrow. That's a solid arrow. I'm sure he once wishes that it was in the 10. Let's see what Eric can do. Little edge. Oh, oh, Raymond takes it. Here we go. Wow. 2024 Lan Lancaster champion Raymond Huang shows up first time at the tournament and walks out with glory. Look at that excitement. That was a show, baby. This is Barbo. Congratulations across the board from his competitor. Under all that enormous pressure, the last couple ends, I have never seen somebody take more deep breaths. He's a little warm right now, but for Huang, Raymond Huang, he comes down to the States and he conquers the world's best with an unbelievable qualification score, marched his way to the number one seed, and now walks away victorious as the 2024 Lancaster Archery Classic Barebo champion. And he'll enjoy this glory for many, many weeks to come. Reggie, you realize my friends in British Columbia will never live in this Be Reggie. It's my new name. 
Hey, Raymond, on seriously though, how does that feel to come out here? Your first classic, you know this atmosphere. You're the 2024 champ. It's pretty unreal. You're gonna be right up there on that banner next year. That's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming out. We appreciate it and congratulations. You're our Barebo champ. Thank you. Well, the highlights of this will be played for many years to come. Matt Zernzak, your summation of what we saw in these amazing matches. Unbelievable show, just like Barebow, never disappoints. To the entire Barebow community out there following along, watching live, we love you guys. And just come to the Classic next year. It is the greatest show in Barebow all year round. The legend Eric Johnson called a 12. He hit a 12. He moved us to one arrow in an elimination match. And it was Raymond Huang from Canada who comes out on top and sits on top of the best in the world for the 20th Lancaster Archery Classic here from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Well, we certainly hope you enjoyed our coverage. We can't wait to see you again next year for more Bearbow action. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. <laughs>